So today we are joined by Rickard Morin, uh, 3D printing aficionado, and we're going to discuss just that, 3D printing. So first first question, before you say anything, how much did I butcher your name? Because I said it with a very heavy French. All right, so this is a, a little bit of lore here. Uh, Rickard is a nickname, actually. Ooh. You said it right, but it's a nickname. Uh, you, because you can say it correctly, you can say my government name. It's uh, Le, uh, Le Chat Morin. Yeah, okay, I get. Oh, so you don't want to go with the Richard? You want Richard only? My my parents gave me the Frenchest name imaginable, even though I cannot speak it to save my life. That's 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 perfect. That's uh, yeah. That's, that's... I would fit right right in Montreal. I would just slide right in, just just like home. Be great. <laughs> yeah, the French name, not a single word. Is, is this is perfect? I can ask where the washroom is and how people's day are. That's it. Yeah, but well, yeah. in Montreal, you really only need bonjour, hi, and then you got it all figured out. This is the only French you need is bonjour, hi, and then it goes, it goes everywhere. There you go. I know uh, the words not to say. Those are the good ones. That's that's how I learn a language. I usually ask ask somebody that speak it like a, a bunch of curses, and then you, you get you start with that like that base because then you can punctuate things, you can accentuate things. You know, it it, work, it works pretty well. Um, I think it's, it's it, it it tells you where that language wants to go. Um, <laughs> but but b bearing uh, all this uh, language shenanigan here, three D printing is in a very interesting place uh, right now. I don't know how long have you been in the the hobby, uh, Rickard. Uh, but, but, uh, how long? When did when when did the pan when was the pandemic like a thing? Twenty twenty twenty, I guess. 2020, so it would have been 2020, around 2020. All right, well, uh, for our, or maybe the, the OGs here, the, so the five, ten years ago, the airbrush kind of came into the scene. It was like really, some people really hated it. Like it, it was not okay to use an airbrush with the, with Warhammer and stuff. And it was, there was a big debate. And I feel like uh, 3D printing is right around that corner right now where some people are adamantly against it. And, and people like you are like super in favor Hey, there's people against it. Really? Are you? Have you, have you never been? I'm. I'm glad that you have not like uh, hurt. Got, oh, got man, any no. like pushback? Really? Everybody I know has been super supportive. I, I, I am, but I've, I've, I've had the, the, the talk of like, oh, it's not okay, or I'm again, against some parts of it. I think, I think is where uh, when people are trying to maybe push the envelope of like, what can they bring to tournaments and, and how oh, much is? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Well, like I, I, I actually respect um, Games Workshop stance. Their their official stance is you can bring printed stuff, but you have to have made it yourself, which is kind of like digital kit bashing almost. Yeah, you, so, yeah, it's, like, it's a it's a conversion yeah, of some sort, right? It's, it's a conversion, and but like I, I've I've never had anybody give me any grief about stuff. That's wild, really. Wow. But I don't. I don't think people really go like hard into the the grief. But I've heard like you know I've heard like the tales of you show up for like a, a pickup game and and the, your opponent has like a, a fully three D printed like whatever army is good at that moment, fully three oh, D printed, well, unpainted, and he's like, yeah, we're, let's let's play, you know. So and, I spent like, all my gonna, time painting like, my overpriced mini, and then you three D print like whatever whatever hotness, and then. Don't bother to paint it. I think that's where maybe there's a a, a little bit more. Again, I say pushback because I think overall it's it's pretty great. I could so that that I've actually heard like I've heard people talk about now. Like I don't do that myself. So when I say like my experience has been positive, it's because I'm like I'm. Okay, I'm going to be very careful careful with what I say here. I'm not doing things like that. And, like, I'm not running, like, entirely printed armies or, like, you know, meta chasing and, like, you know, whatever. But, so, whatever. but, 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 but so you do agree that there is a line somewhere of, like, this can be, like, maybe not weaponized, but. Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, absolutely. Okay. Like, but, uh, well,. It's one of those fine. It's one of those fine lines where, and especially because like we're talking intellectual property and stuff like that, right? So like Games Workshop has a vested interest in shutting certain things down, 
but then there's also scarcity where you know like i'm a kid like i play imperial and chaos knights and war dogs haven't like they were they still aren't in stock yeah no, it's been so a like, year a year of no war dogs for sure for yeah sure. so like what, what do you do so but then you know like there's no shortage of Tyranids in stock, but people show up with like a fully 3D printed Tyranid army, like if they're really good. So it's like, mm, uh, I, I and, and I agree again. So I think I think there's there's definitely a line somewhere, and I, but I'm glad you didn't get any pushback because that's always kind of what I what I fear is people doing like cool stuff and then getting like kind of slammed for like how dare you do cool things that I well. I think what helps me, other than the fact that, like, the community in Ottawa is, like, super great, but, like, you can tell that, like, I didn't pull something off the shelf and just do it. Like, a lot of my stuff, like, I, I spent more hours working on that than I have therapy. So it's, like, people can tell, like, oh, wow, like, you put you put the work in to get this stuff done. Yeah. And I think that I think that plays a role too, because it's like once you start getting into like the design and the remixing and stuff like that, like that's like that that's that's my jam. Like that's what I love doing, and that's what I spend like almost like the majority of my hobby time I spend on the computer, just like you know mucking around and like like taking a file and tweaking it or like making my own making my own shit, and it's like when when you see that on the table like it just takes on like like and then like people are like oh wow that looks so cool like thanks guys. yeah because they've never oh. seen th this model before because like you made you made the thing and like and now because people like even people without printers are aware of some of the some of the creators like uh, uh i'm not going to say who they are um because i don't want uh lawyers to get at them but like <laughs> people are aware of <laughs> aware of some of these creators so then, like, they're used to seeing some of these, like, gorgeous sculpts, these, like, great, like, proxy stuff. But oh, you mean, like, you STL up... creators? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So then when you, like, hit the table and, like, you put your own spin on things, it's, it's like music. Like, that's, that's like, what it is. Like, when you put your own spin on somebody else's thing, like, you do a like cover. A cover or a remix, or... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... So, like, I don't know. I think that might have something to do with it, too. It's like people see the work and they're like, oh, like, no. No, so, but, uh, but, and I like it because, uh, again, there's a great parallel with the airbrush. It's, it's not about the laziness of it, where it's not just like, oh, I use an airbrush because it makes me two seconds and then I'm done with it. It's, well, no, it's, it's a new art thing because you, you get, you get, get full, like, you get balls deep into it and you remit. Like, cause I don't, I don't have a printer and my only experience is whenever I need like a bits or a piece or something, I just Google it until I find something that looks convenient enough. And then I ask one of my friends that has a 3D printer, I say, Hey man, I need this. Can you like the bits reprint thing it? It's such a huge, like it's such a huge deal. Like there's how many websites and like Canada has no websites. So like we got to order either from the States, which we end up paying like a box of models worth for shipping to get like five dollars worth of bits or we're like we're importing stuff from from europe yeah but like now like it, yeah, it wasn't it, was, it wasn't our idea to have crisis use be able to take all ion blasters and the, and the kit <laughs> only having like two of them so like what do you do well you know you can just no ex exactly people, yeah people have bought the models they own the plastic models and Instead of, you know, spending, like, 20 British pounds to get, like, five ion blasters over, you know, you can just, you know. Yeah. Or just some, some things that are, like, un possible to find. Like, I, uh, my, uh, the thing that come to mind is I had a, a Custodes Dreadnought with, like, the big halberd. I bought it secondhand, and the halberd was broken off. Now, Forge World don't like, make bits or whatever. Yeah. What am I, like... What am I gonna do? So I, you know, look online. Hey, th oh, this thing exists. Hey, buddy, can you print me this Albert? And lo and behold, the, now now it exists. And you you also like you mentioned um, you mentioned stuff that's like not available or not in yeah. print anymore. And like uh, a neat subset of three D printing that I got into because like we all had spare time when I uh, you know. COVID precautions and stuff. And I was unemployed at the time too. So like I had like time to spend. Um, 3D scanning is becoming a bigger thing. Oh, and yeah. so, and like I, 
so like I've got a little rig that I can set up and I've got a software program and like it's it's getting wild and so like I've had people send me out of like an out of print mini and they're like okay can you can you scan this so I can have multiple copies really and it's it's that advanced like you you have a and I don't I don't know we'll, we'll talk about like what setup you have but so like a non like professional setup allows you to like scan a, a real model and then just go nuts with it I'm not going to go into too much details because of lawyers but yes yep. No, but I, again, I think uh, if we're taught, yeah, because you can do it, like, you can use it with whatever yeah. you want, right? Like you want a, a pen or whatever. Well, yeah. Well, like I, like I find myself now, like my wife loves going to the dollar store and stuff like that. And so like, I'll, I'll just browse around I'll just look at something. I'll be like, can, can I, like, is this worth 3D scanning? And, but and it's also but, like so, so useful for like all aspects of life too, like getting a 3D printer and just like printing all kinds of like doodads, like a, on a high pad stand or whatever. Well, like, like with resin printing, it's about the detail stuff, and then with the plastic printing, you can get into like you can get you can get into like some like knickknacks and doodads and like widgets. Like uh, Dan for Red Dragon, he gives out like these little like really super handy like two three inch widgets, so you can like do your oh, unit those, are, those are so great. So you, great. like unit coherency for like you know the losers that like don't run large ass models all the time <laughs> that you have to actually worry about coherency you have the so, measure, yeah uh, you have the co coherencies for losers that don't play knights <laughs> is what you're about to say right <laughs> i mean you're you're the host you're the one that said it uh, yeah i have non-knight armies actually no but 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 yeah but the, the the just the measuring like the six or the nine inch like uh -huh. thingy is, is just so convenient or age of sigmar getting the six Uh, the three inches for Age of Sigmar, because that's the the engagement range, right? Or like whatever game system you have, you can print like the correct thing. It's, it's just again convenient. Like I think convenience is what you really buy into with the the 3D printing more than you know you save money or or whatever. It's it's the convenience part that's great. There's the convenience part, but people like it's better than what it has been in terms of like entry barriers but like a lot of a lot of stuff has been figured out by pioneers and by people people who have been doing it for a few years so now somebody like my printer broke a couple months ago so i got a new one and like the difference between setting up the new one and the old one were, were astronomically different like i changed two settings on 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 the new printer versus the previous one i had like it took it took hours upon hours yeah. But, i've heard you know, that before too so so and that's that's also a, a real thing with 3d printing is like the technology is is moving way way like super fast right in in a matter of years the printer is not the the, the printer game is not the same at all from from one well, year to the next and like it depends and like if if you're a, if you're a certain age It makes like it takes it takes on like it's something we've experienced before. Like I I I, I can't remember how you're how old. That, that's that's no no I'm 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 37. Yeah, you're 37. So actually no like it's it's appropriate because I'm yes. I'm 42. So you and I are both. And that, at the that you, my, I compared it to TV before, where the TV and the yeah. plasma and the 3D and the what what have you. Even internet. Right. And like, so for people my age, like that, like, you know, 39 to 42, like that exponential technology ramp. And like now we're seeing that we're seeing that with printing. We're seeing that with laser cutters. Now you can get super great laser cutters. Oh, yeah. I got into uh, that before three. I was like, people are building stuff. Now I want to destroy stuff with lasers. That's, that was that's more my jam. That, that's that's next for me. Probably is a laser cutter. <laughs> I, I have ideas. Oh, oh, and it's <laughs> that's the worst. Is having these machines like you, the 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 it start like churning right, and then you the, the ideas just like keep piling on, and then yeah, it's it's dangerous. It's a man should not have that much power, Rickard. A man should not have that much power. Like it's 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 wild to me. Like so, like I get really philosophical about this sometimes because like of how much this has actually impacted my life and. So 
I'm I'm very transparent about this out in public and stuff like that. But like I'm autistic and I'm dyslexic. And so when I was a kid being 42, I didn't have a way to express myself. Like I, I, I literally couldn't do it. Like I couldn't talk right. I couldn't write right. I couldn't read. And then there's the, the social dynamics. So now I'm 42 years old and I can take these ideas that are up here. I can get them on a screen and then I can actually physically have them made. You can hold it in your hand. Like, and somebody no, else can like, hold it in their hand too. It's, it's amazing. Like decades of not being able to express myself cre- like creatively. And now I'm sitting here with this box that lets me like get things from here and here and get them yeah. out there is just this wild thing that continuously blows my mind. Oh. And like, I- I'm so thankful for the community, the Warhammer community in Ottawa, because if I didn't get involved with them, I would never have had the opportunity to do this stuff. Yeah, you'd, you'd have no purpose building these things or getting that printer and all, all these things. It's, it's Yeah, and I just would have spent the pandemic sitting on my ass not doing anything. A lot of people did, too. Like, I mean, yeah, and I'm not judging. I'm not judging those who, who everybody like, handles you know, it different. But that, like you, fa- but... you found a way to like channel your use your yeah. spare time or whatever in a great way too right probably so. over a thousand hours if you count 3d printing 3d scanning and designing and stuff like that like well over a thousand at this point all right and it's it's so true what you see because the way you said it i have i found the same thing through art where i was like i'm not an artistic person and yet when i got like a miniature in my hand and i start painting it all the art like goes there and that works but I think I said this in uh, with, with somebody else. Is like if you put me in front of a sheet of paper, there's no art that's gonna happen anywhere. But for some reason, miniatures that works, and for you is the same thing. It's like everything but that's like, inside, I can put like it. It works you now. Of, you put me in front of the paper, though. I want something to happen, and my my brain yeah want like like it knows what it wants, but then like it's. Something gets lost. It's like I, um, I I fully understand. It's, it's amazing, and like it's it's some of his it motor control, and like that's why I use rattle cans to, like to paint my nights and stuff because I I like I've got motor control issues and all this other stuff. But it's like just having having that outlook, and it's the same thing with airbrushes. Like I'm never gonna judge people who use airbrushes because it's the same deal. Like oh, that's yeah. how they express themselves, and like there's some badass stuff that people are doing. Oh yeah, a hundred, hundred percent. And again, every every form of art has like its own merits, and but it also can be you know like abused or, or uh, you know the yeah. guy that three D prints his meta army is the same guy that would like dip his his miniatures in three paint pots to get it three colors at like yeah. different levels. You know, it, it's it's yes, like that maybe is not art, you know, or that maybe is not like the purpose of three D printing, but for for a, a lot of other reasons, it's it's for sure there. And that, and that well, you have like a, a yeah. thousand hours in there in the three D printing or over a thousand you said right? Easily, easily. Okay, if I have zero. Three D printing and three <laughs> D so, scanning, but then if you count the hours I spent painting, it's probably like twenty. Like <laughs> I'm using paint markers and rattle cans yeah, to, no, you, you to cheat, get that cheat already. All no, but but for the three D printing, I mean, uh, I have like zero hours, zero experience. I don't know how it works. Again, my only. 3D printing experience is pointing at an STL file for some of my friends say, can I get this? Uh, so can you maybe give me like a, just a quick uh, run now? Like uh, how, how can one get started? Like what type of printer I can look into for and for what they're good at? Um, you need to decide what you want to do first. So if you want to do terrain or like those little like widgets or knickknacks and stuff like that, then you, you want a PLA or like a plastic printer. Right. If you want those are the ones with the big, the big bundles. Uh, yeah, the big wire the big rolls. bundle. Shit. Yeah, the roll, gotcha. and then, and then the uh, resin printers uh, have the liquid, the liquid cocaine that you pour in. Um, you, that that produces the more detailed stuff. So, like, if you want bits, if you want, uh, you know, actual models, yeah, and then twenty you twenty vehicles, millimeter, millimeter size, like the the minis themselves, right? The, yeah, like. Is, is minis like detail oriented and with vehicles you could probably do both okay like uh but you but the thing about 
the plastic printers is that um so with resin printers after you get them dialed in you're usually good like you can you can go a while without having to worry about fails or anything else like that with like plastic printers pla printers if you breathe the wrong way you're gonna have to you're gonna have to change something okay so you really get what you pay for with those. Like you, you want to spend, and I'm anybody who's listening to this. I'm telling you, if you're going to get a plastic printer, buy a Prusa. Okay, so Prusa is is the good the good kind. Be, but why yeah. why exactly? Because of the 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 settings are better or easier to. It's the it's it's the caliber of the machine. It's the 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 parts that make the machine. It's the fact that there's little tech pieces like auto auto leveling the print bed, um, so that you don't have to spend like 20 hours uh, adjust adjusting the print level. Uh, do, do like the um, it's it just they they've just they, they were the first one of the first people to make a consumer printer, and it shows because they just continually developed it and developed it. And everybody I know that has bought a Prusa. Like they might buy like two upgrades for it, like uh, a carbon nozzle, so they don't have to replace the nozzle, and maybe like one other one other thing, and then, but like I bought a uh, an Elegoo Neptune, which is an Ender Three clone, and like I have like I've upgraded a but like upgraded it a bunch, and it still doesn't it's it's still not consistent. Like I'm literally using it to hold stuff. On a desk, <laughs> it's a door a doorstop right now. Or yeah, it's, yeah, an, yeah. Expen it's an expensive doorstop right uh, now. Yeah. And but versus my resin printers, you know, after I got them dialed in, it's just all right. And, just, and uh, what, what's the the cost to get like something decent? Is is there is there a way to kind of start cheap and upgrade, or do I I really want to spend all my money as the, like the best I can buy? On the like so, on the first try, or I've got a bit of a controversial opinion. Ooh, hot, take, uh, hot takes! Hot takes. <laughs> um, so I have an Elegoo Mars 4 Max, which is a 6K monochrome printer. Um, right now, it is on sale for three hundred seventy nine dollars and ninety nine cents. It's twenty five percent off. First of all, these printers you can usually get on sale at some point. They they cycle through sales quite regularly, especially around the holidays. Uh, and yeah, any like that. any kind of reason that they have to give you a discount, they will give you a discount. Is the... exactly exactly exactly. So, six K monochrome. I think anything more than that is overkill. Okay. Um. So, at that point. I think it's diminishing returns. Now, the printers that have that are more expensive, that have uh, that have the higher screen, they also might have like a larger print bed, you know, so you can print more stuff or, or lar like, larger uh, models without and like a couple of quality of life things. But like I'm like I'm able to literally do everything I need to. Do. I can print bases. I can print night weapons. I can uh, uh, I can print proxies uh to to test things before going out and buying the real models like that yeah that and kind, until that come back back in stock for example yeah well that that's it right and so it's um so that that my my hottest take is with resin printers there's diminishing returns you don't want to necessarily spend stupid amounts of money it, but and then with plastic printers Yes, you spend stupid amounts of money. Right, right. yeah. So, so depending on the type of printer, the <laughs> the, the strategy is not so that, that that that's very important because that's that sounds like a newbie trap right there. Which I'm I'm glad I'm glad we got there. Uh, uh, super, uh, super quickly. And brand uh, brands like I'm not a big brand guy, but like they do matter. So there's some names that you can trust, like Any Cubic and Elogu are two that you really can't go wrong with what you with what you grab so like you can spend a bit of extra money and get like a 9k out of goo saturn and like it'll be, like i personally am fine with 6k and i get great results with it but i also know what i'm doing a 9k like a, a higher definition printer 
there's more margin for error if you don't know what you're doing, you know, like because and, the screen's better and all that other stuff. So, and when you say know what you're doing, you mean in the customizing, like in your like software, like Blender or whatever uh, software you well, use. There's, no, there's so there's troubleshooting involves. There's stuff like um, so we live in Canada, so when somebody gives you their um, their settings for printing, because what you do is you you shove the file into a program and then you add these supports. So that it doesn't, you know, fall into the fall into the vats. Like it's that way. Like it stays on the on the uh, on the print bed. I understand. But there's when you do that, and then you process it after. There's these settings involving exposure and temperature and and so speed. humidity and all the all the as you said yeah. the, the breeding wrong next to it, and then you're fucking up your so setting. so once you get it dialed in, once you get it dialed in, you're fine. Except. If you are getting help from somebody and they live in Arizona, it's going to be different than being in Alaska or whatever. Yeah, it won't. Well, yeah, no. Like it gets like it's minus forty over here, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, and this again, this is. I feel like this is another thing that you need to say to hear it from somebody. Otherwise, it does not make sense as to why you know this oh. guy from the internet tells me it's working and it's not, and then. But it's like you, look, you look at uh, you look at to do box default settings, and Lychee actually has community curated settings where you can go uh, and see this uh, different settings from different uh, people who use the the program to add their supports and all so this cool. other stuff like that. Uh, but where are those people? Are they in Vancouver where it's 10 degrees all year long, or are these like tried and tested? You know, it's minus 40 one month and then plus 40 the next oh be and between season you probably need to also change your settings like here right where, where uh july is oh, like burning up and then it's cold as balls and i the... mean i've got i've got i i have it at all so you have like, like the that. summer setting the spring set i this is this is so 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 nerdy i, I love it you know it is so deep so i i don't because when i started because you remember that the uh I started around the fall, so it was already cold. And I realized that, like, I had a bunch of fails happening. And I realized that, okay, it's the temperature. My printer is, it's a well-ventilated basement, but it's still a basement. And because it's well-ventilated, it's a bit colder than even your regular basements. Yeah. So, because ventilation and stuff, that, 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 that kind of shit is important. So, uh, and we can talk about the health stuff later. But, oh, like, yeah. the, um, but the, um, so what I did was I got a uh, it's it's a cover it's a it just it's a thermal cover that you just put on top, and then I also put the box the printer came in on top of the thermal cover, so it just starts baking in there, increasing the temperature of the resin and the print and the printer, and then during the winter it's fine, and then during the summer. Take it, take off the lunch box. I just take it off, and then I get to keep. I get. I get to keep the same settings. This is amazing. And, and you, you mentioned health. Uh, so health thing is mainly for the resin one, correct? Like the the plastic one, you don't yeah. require any fancy schmancy. Uh, I mean, I want to put. I want to like put the plastic printer like right beside your desk, your okay. computer desk, or anything. Uh, but like none of us is, is a health professional, by the way, guys. So you know, like read the read the manual like, before he goes oh, into this. Read, Not like, legal advice, actual, okay? Uh, there's, <laughs> there's actual safety data sheets, and you can look at and stuff. Yeah, because you know, so, like, it's it's chemicals and like none of this oh, stuff is like yeah. Safe, safe, right? So, and even if the company say like, "Oh yeah, this is safe to pour down the drain," it's not safe to pour down the yeah. drain. <laughs> like if you read the actual safety data sheets, it specifically says. Don't pour this shit down the drain. Even if even the eco-friendly stuff, it's like, hey, don't do this. Yeah, and... eco-friendly is is still like it's eco-friendly er, not like super green. You can yeah. drink it. Yeah, <laughs> please, don't, please don't do that. <laughs> uh, the uh, so like you got to wear gloves. Uh, that's 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 number one. The you got you like a mask. Do you do like the underwear and the mask like a full Walter White kit or? Uh, depending on, so there, there's a piss pot of great resources and this guy, uh, out there online, there's this guy, he goes by uncle Jesse and he has a YouTube channel, top, top notch, uh, content. And he did a video about, uh, 
alternatives to uh, isoprozo alcohol to clean your prints because uh, IPA smells bad and it's also really not healthy to like, you know, like start huffing alcohol fumes. Yeah. So it's, it's also you... it got out of stock really quickly because of the the, the rise of 3D printing. It it was is it started out super cheap and then the prices increased and it became unavailable altogether. Oh, and there is also the matter of a plague in the world yeah. where everybody. I mean, there's that didn't help uh, supply yeah, and demand slightly. <laughs> but so what what I did was uh, like I forget how I came across the video. When I came across the video and I watched and I watched it, I was like, oh shit. So like you can get something called an ultrasonic cleaner, which oh yeah, um, and then and like a lot of people who like do painting and stuff like are familiar with ultrasonic cleaners for but years. I've talked but about like this you... a bunch of times before. Yeah. Oh man, and so like so ultrasonic cleaner, and then you mix like fifty fifty simple green and water, so you th and then like you throw your print in. Really, simple for, like, green works on three D prints. Interesting. Yeah. Simple Green I is know, my right? favorite product ever. It's used to strip or oh, clean perfect. airbrushes. It's green, non-toxic, and it smells like root beer, guys. It's amazing. It's, and Mr. Clean is another one you can use. It's not as good, but you can use Mr. Clean, too. So, like, sometimes, like, if I'm I'm being cheap or, like, the grocery store doesn't carry Simple Green, but, like, if I need to get some, like, you know, my basement smells like lemon. It's great. But, like, it's... Uh, it's uh, But, yeah, so, like, that mitigates some of the health some of the health concerns because you're, you're not dealing with those like that alcohol fumes instead it's you know just a simple green and water oh, this no this is this is great stuff and, and and like and like you said the ultrasonic can be like i've stripped models you know like it's it's yeah. like yes it's, it's got I'm, multiple I'm, purposes this is all like ghetto airbrush stuff uh right there it's perfect it's value <laughs> town no, I, I I love these like uh like like snake oil type of products where they're not really used for that, but they work great for that. And then I'm all about the MacGyver life. Like there you go. Getting getting something. Uh, one 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 of the other life hacks is a hair dryer. Oh, because you 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 need the 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 heat and the the air to like what push the so liquid with off. The, well, something? with the support with the supports. If you want to remove the support, oh. supports come off a lot easier when when it's hot, right? And so you got to be careful that you don't bend like fiddly bits too much and stuff like that. But like you blast it with the hair dryer, and, and like then all so, of like, your I supports. The, and then I so like I've got a hair dryer sitting on a counter turned on, and then or like I'll hold on to it or whatever, and I'll blast it, and then I'll set it down, and then I'll take the supports off. But then, like a hair dryer is also great for you know if you want your your paint to cure faster. That's that's so that is so cool and so eye opening as to how like uh, convenient or available these things are. Because you think I was under the impression I would need like very specialized products to do all of this, and you're again the most the most specialized product other than the printer itself. And like there's there's all sorts of things like you can get a. Um, like both Edigu and Anycubic sell a all-in-one like washer curing station and stuff like that. Yeah, I've but seen I've seen that. But how how useful? Do you own one or do you not even bother with this? I I own a, a curing station that's good for like smaller things, like say like uh, a couple night weapons, okay, uh, or like smaller smaller prints. But like I printed like if you're printing vehicles and stuff, it's not it's not gonna be able to do it. So I have a um, uh, I went the ultrasonic route uh, be because I wanted the option to uh, easily strip models and stuff like that too, right? So uh, so for me, I'm like, okay, I can I can knock out two things with this one tool, and then I you get uh, UV lamps, you can get uh, specific. So the uh, UV lamps are not default. With I, I naively thought they were like kind of a default setting of like if you're getting a, a a resin printer, you would get the UV lamp with it. Well, so people people familiar with printing will know. Okay, like I need to cure these things when I'm done washing them and stuff like that. But somebody who's like brand new, they because it it doesn't come with it. Now, if you go on Amazon. And you click on, you know, oh, like the freak, frequently bought together thing. Freak, is... freak, frequently, like literally, you can get a Mars 4 Max for three seventy nine, and then a Mercury 
plus two and one washing machine for 142 and a bottle of resin for 32 comes to five five uh 555 47 which that's, a, that's a, a somewhat affordable obby there because you yeah. th- this gets you in the game like all the all in one gets you in the game program right there so uh, I'll, I'll be sure to link to that for sure because uh, i mean that's that's kind of a great like starter point uh right there and it may is there one thing maybe you can leave on leave on um one great thing to do with a tree printer maybe one thing that you should not bother doing now that you've got this like this experience of uh, you should not bother with this or do this is great don't be stupid like we talked before about about like people people being a bit cavalier with like ready models uh, I've heard horror stories of people not curing their, uh, um, not cleaning their prints and curing them properly. Um, I, I actually that happened to me where a couple of my prints broke. If you don't cure, if you hollow your prints to save uh, resin consumption and then you don't uh, you don't cure them and wash them fully, then they'll start cracking. And that actually happened to me uh, when I opened up my my uh, tackle box with my models and so like i immediately went and i immediately threw out all of that stuff immediately washed everything threw out the bubble wrap through this throw it out yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know nobody needs that in their life <laughs> um uh the other thing the other thing and i'll leave it up to you if you want to keep this in the podcast noted okay um i have heard people say the reason they get into printing or the reason why they ask their friends for prints is because models are expensive. Um, I create some of my own stuff. I do some design stuff. I do some remixing things, uh, remix of some stuff. I know how much time people spend to make these files. If the files cost money, I am begging people listening to this to just spend the damn money. It could be $5, it could be $20. Yeah, you should buy ST. Also, the good ones, you have to buy, and they're so cheap. Like, you, you like, buy, like, $5 for, a, like, a chapter in Sigma? Even, even, even 15 for, like, a yeah. big-ass Bloodthirster model. Um, you, you Like, if they have a Patreon, you might have to sign up for the Patreon to get access to their back catalog. I am begging people. Like, if the files are free... Just you can look up the Creative Commons license that you can see. You can literally see on on where you download the file. You'd be like, okay, like can I share this? Can I remix this? Yeah, and I feel like do that's I a have... big Napster situation where people don't really read like what they're allowed or they should do with with the prints. And then I think that maybe that's why we're like in this situation where people print whatever they feel like, but maybe they they they're not allowed to. And and like I'm a part of a couple servers and like creators like. We're fighting back. Like we've been hit with DMCA notices by Games Workshop if things are a little bit too close, and we understand why that's not why why they do that and why they're protecting their assets. At the same time, we're seeing people uh, either sharing files for free that the creators were originally charging for, or even worse, people are buying the files and then they're opening up an Etsy shop and they're selling the files for cheaper. Oh wow! Oh, that whew, that is low. That's like so. So wow. that's when. So na- now, Etsy, uh, Cults 3D, uh, uh, Thiniverse. Now they're actively working with creators uh, like myself to be like, okay, like if you see anybody doing this stuff, let us know, and then immediately they get ta- they get. Oh, I mean, that's great because that's that's really like scraping the the that's a bomb of barrels. Like it's like thieves stealing thieves kind of type of thing where you know, I don't want to pay so, Games Workshop, but I also don't want to pay you. That's like giving me an alternative yeah, to that, that's, and then that's it exactly. So like what whatever your takes are, your opinions are, just support your independent artists. That's, yeah, that's no, so that's, and artists. I think other artists is the exact word. Is like if people design the thing for you, they should be compensated one way or another. I that, I feel that that's a great take. I don't think, I I think it'd be hard pressed to defend this. You know, the um the positive thing I would say is don't be afraid to get experimental, which sounds creepy and is absolutely not a sex thing about three D um, printing. 
about, <laughs> about 3D print. Well, I mean, hey, we don't king shame do. on this podcast, but like, you no, know, we don't. No, we're worried hey, for you your do, safety you is what you. we are. So experiment <laughs> with 3D printing is what we're saying. No, get like get get experimental. Like tr- like just throw shit against the wall. Like if you see like if if you have a printer, just like print some wild stuff. Like and like don't be afraid to take some chances. Like what's the worst that can happen? You get a failed print, all right. You you know, you clean your vat. You you th- you know you've lost some resin. You lost a you lost a lot of, little bit of time. But like don't don't be afraid. Like if you see something cool, you know do it and and talk to your tournament organizers. Be like, hey, I found this cool proxy. Can, Can I, I use it? it? it. Can I use it? Like so, like be communic- be be the change you want to see. No, I th- I, th- I think that I th- I I really think that's great. I think it's it's a very uh, open approach and like a, also like kind of a, a respectful approach like you're res- respectful of yourself and like others that you know again like the same thing of like i like i paid money for this army because i don't want to play versus you know fisher price's dinosaur for squigoth and like whatever like 3d printed unpainted stores. things it's a it, there's a an ethical way to do this i feel like yes and be respectful to stores yeah exactly like, like support support your local stores. So like um, that that that's 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 a huge thing. Like my my local store is incredibly supportive. Of which which one is your uh, like, your local store? Uh, uh, Red Dragon in Ottawa with uh, with uh, Dan Morris. Dan Morris, yeah. That, Dan is also going to be a, a guest on season one of the of the podcast yep. talking about the Red and Dragon. Like, so and him uh, him Jeremy Atkinson and Nick Blackburn run a bunch of, run a bunch of tournaments here. They're all very understanding about three D models. At the same time, I make it a point like Dan's going to be able to you know put his kids through college if he wants because of the money I spend in the store. So it's it's like just make sure make sure you support the local establishments that you frequent and like don't don't be an asshole. Those those are very good ending words. I think we're going to leave it on that. Thank you very much for your time and the the education. This was oh, very uh-huh. very. I'm glad because I started with like uh, to quote Drake. I started from the bottom uh, with, with with this, and now now I'm here, and I I'm, I feel a lot more uh, knowledgeable about what I'm going to point to my friends next time. I want I want bits. I'll, I'll know what next I'm time, asking yeah. of them. Next time you want bits, well maybe you'll get maybe you'll, you'll get one get one for yourself. I don't think so. I, I just like pointing and <laughs> depending on my friends too much. I'm a, I'm, I'm a freeloader that way. Can you, can you, a, do, can a, you do this? I've, I've yeah, actually well, had a tree printer. I've had a tree printer for a year and I've never powered it. Like, I've never plugged it in. I moved it from one desk to another desk to another desk to a shelf. And as someone was like, Max, you have to be realistic here. This is not, this is not happening. This, this is, you're not about that life, brother. <laughs> I just sold it. I, I traded it. it in. I respect it. I respect it. <laughs>